it just boggles the mind, in my opinion. We have you know, about a liter of water and fat and energy flowing inside here, and we have this entire life. Your brain is filled with neurons. You have about 100 billion of them in your head. Um, every one of them makes thousands of connections to every other one of them. And if you want to try to understand what that circuit is doing, it would be very helpful to have a wiring diagram, a connection uh, map of how every neuron connects to every other neuron. So what I'm trying to do here uh, is build tools to help with that kind of mapping. Actually image the brain anatomy to get how all of the cells connect to each other to get the overall architecture of the circuit. Here it really is full autonomy with a level of funding and freedom that maybe there are one or two other places in the world that would provide that. There's no strings attached. No one's telling me what to do. And the autonomy is real. What we did that was new was build an electron microscope that can take pictures incredibly quickly. What we did was jack it up onto essentially like a car lift, a scaffolding. We call it the scope on stilts. What you do by jacking it up is you allow that cone to have a greater height and you now can pack in an array of cameras that each in parallel are taking pictures. You have to take a lot of pictures really fast. You don't want to wait 10 years to acquire such a data set. So what this scope does is this camera array that, that we built, it takes pictures fast enough that you can acquire volumes image of image data that are large enough and high enough resolution to let you trace wires between neurons. So what you see in these pictures are like a cross-section through a bowl of spaghetti, except it's a cross-section through the brain. You can take pictures where the pixels, instead of being microns or one millionth of a meter, are nanometers or one billionth of a meter. In the year I've been here, um, we're going about six times faster than what we did before. If I were in a conventional academic environment, things would be very sort of at the beginning stage. Um, and they're still at the beginning stage here, but the beginning stage here is that I have a working next generation microscope that I am now thinking about how to do biology with. I, I, I can't imagine that happening in a normal uh, place, um, a normal academic environment. They give you the resources and they say, go, do it. And if you change your mind and you say, oh, I want to do something totally else, that's okay. Having this group of other fellows um, gives us a way to compare notes and compare strategies, compare experiences, and we often uh, run ideas by each other that are somewhat, you know, because the place has concentrated people who generate insane ideas, and we find it useful to tell each other these insane ideas before going public with them. And so frequently we'll shoot each other down and sometimes we'll say, oh, you're missing this thing or that thing, but it could work. I can kind of crawl this talent web and find the right people who actually are getting me further much faster than I had hoped. I just focus on making this thing work. They support people who propose projects that may be beyond those people's capacities, may be beyond the capacity of current technology, and may not work at all. That's what they support. And they support it because they're hoping that science will come out of here that's unlike science that can happen at other places. They're hoping that some science here tells us something that wouldn't have occurred to us otherwise. They're betting on the person, not the particular thing that you're proposing. Um, so when you say, what do they tell you to do? They're telling you to make the most of the opportunity.